and maybe it would be good to to have a go with Thierry, so you kind of uh, warm up. Yes, yeah, self-criticism, but it's um, viewers, they see something uh, with a distance, so they, uh, they see something on the wall or installed, so they see it from, far, for, from a distance, so this distance doesn't include them in the, in the questioning, is it my fault? So they, they see something which might be political, but then they don't think uh, this problem, I'm, I'm the origin of the problem. So uh, then it creates a public which is, uh, uh, let's say, protected from self-criticism, and uh, and after, basically, the museum also makes sure that uh, very fast they, are, uh, they get a massage from the museum, let's say the, the, the cafeteria, the cakes, uh, the, 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 the comfortable zone. So um, uh, they are not in danger. They have a little uh, frisson, a little, they are shake a bit, uh, but they get released very fast. And, um, and they don't accuse themselves of the problem. So, so basically here in Denmark, not only in Denmark, but we are the origin of the problem some, somehow. Some of the pollution, some of the weapon are made here, some of the things. So, so, uh, so we are some of the origin of the problem. So, so if we have some uh, refugee, we can ask ourselves, why are these refugees moving? Maybe it's because we are part of certain wars and stuff. So, so this, uh, this question maybe are not always asked uh, because then uh, we risk to cut the funding or uh, make the government a bit angry. Or, uh, so this makes us uh, not being self-critic and somehow then this will make us uh, accept uh, uh, the problems and then fall asleep again. So, so, so what we talked last time is that maybe the museum have, have a big sleeping uh, um, engine that uh, mm. make everybody mm. gas, every, everyone like the news. I compare the museum sometimes with the news. TV at least. <laughs> May I? Yes, please. Reply to that. Um, I think it's, a, it's an interesting challenge and an observation that I can uh, agree with to a certain extent. And then I also, of course, disagree. You don't agree completely? I don't agree completely. I promise not to agree completely. And I never completely agree, uh, Thierry. Uh, because. Um, uh, why not? Because, why not? Because I love to discuss with you. And uh, if I didn't, if I agreed with everything, there was no discussion. So it's simple as that. I say I, I would like to come back to the uh, to the sleeping thing and to the dream thing because I think that yes we might be sleeping machines but we are also creators of very interesting dreams and without dreaming there will be absolutely no progression in society. But let's get back to that. Uh, so um, I, I the part I agree with you uh, with or on is the the part uh, about the uh, the hypocrisy of the art institution. Artists, uh, dealers, museums, all included. I was, as probably many of you, uh, or some of you, uh, uh, attending the uh, opening days of the uh, Venice Biennale, and it was easy to see that some 20,000 people came there during uh, three days, four days, uh, all coming by flight, uh, seeing works having been transported by containers, by uh, airplanes, and so on. So it's a it's a quite uh, it's quite easy to uh, to make the math. Uh, it's something like fifteen thousand tons of CO two being emitted uh, just for those four days. A scaring amount of those works being shown there are about our warnings about the climate change. So there's a paradox there, uh, and we all contribute to the climate change, but we also at least show a certain will to embrace this problematics and to some way confront it. Uh, but there is a lot of paradoxes like that in the art world and, um, and, um, and I think it's, it's actually a real problem. So thanks for, for pointing to that. Uh, and, um, and if you go back in history now, I'm, I'm, I'm leading a museum that's not only a museum of contemporary and modern art, but also historical and probably first and foremost a historical museum that is, uh, we have a collection of Western art from the last, uh, representing this last uh, 700 years of European history. Uh, but then again, um, it's only a small fraction of that history that's represented and, uh, and it contains a lot of uh, ideologies, power, power plays, power positions and so on, which makes it, in my opinion, a really interesting collection with a lot of 
equally interesting blind spots and uh, um, uh, a lot of interesting omissions. So, um, and, and the question is, how do we deal with these paradoxes, with these omissions, with these blind spots, with these uh, um, uh, stories and, uh, and these um, historical uh, catastrophes even that, that's our, that are embedded in our collections and in our daily practices as, as museums? Well, first of all, uh, I would say that, that um, um, that self-criticism is, in my opinion, and I'm, I probably we are not self-critical enough, uh, but but uh, but self-criticism is is really part of uh, uh, of running an institution today, you, and and uh, and you should be um, able to um, to identify your own shortcomings as an institution, and to be able to see what you are not able to do, and to analyze the reasons for not being able to do that. Uh, which can be financial or a matter of uh, attitude or tradition or whatever it is. So, um, and I actually think that self-criticism uh, is part of what we do, but but it's uh, it might not be enough. But uh, but I think that self-criticism is is already uh, being being self or self-reflection, being a self-reflexive institution. That is um, an institution that has an awareness of where it comes from and what it is to be a state-funded institution today uh, is uh, is actually already a part of uh, what we do. Um, but of course, um, there is this dimension I think that is embedded in the institution as such that we can, uh, for example, in 2015, uh, uh, we uh, we mounted an exhibition. It was before I took up the position as director, uh, that was called "Nature Strikes Back," uh, in connection with the uh, or in conjunction with the with the um, with the climate summit, and there was a big pool of money you can apply as an institution and get funding for whatever you did and uh, that related to this uh, climate summit, and uh, and the museum did what it should do, uh, uh, namely mounting an exhibition on. Uh, how art has been, re nature has been represented by art during 700 years, uh, things that museums do. And uh, people went there and you can say, uh, well, they, um, uh, they had a good time and they saw some pictures and then they went down to the cafeteria and had, had a coffee and a cake. Now at least it's organic, it wasn't organic back then. <laughs> so that, that's a little progress. It's more expensive or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also more expensive, yes. Uh, but being climate friendly is actually quite expensive, uh, so uh, so that's that's part of the, a larger discussion. So, but but anyway, uh, and then then you would say clearly that um, people in the cafeteria that fell asleep, they might have been made conscious of some uh, historical backgrounds for the uh, for the situation we're in today. But but basically, when they go to the cafeteria, they fall asleep and they, they forget everything, but they had a good time. So it was basically like seeing a mainstream movie, and then they went back, went back home and saw a mainstream movie that same night. And I would say, well, first of all, I think that point of view or that criticism uh, is potentially a little bit arrogant. Because what you do is that you generalize uh, uh, about what people actually take back home. Uh, because you could say exactly the same thing here. You see, Buddha, too late, <laughs> global warning, haha. Uh, I get it. But then you grab your car at the parking space and you go back home and you emit a lot of CO CO2. And uh, well, did you change? Did it change your life? No, it didn't. That's that's the same the theory about how people react. But what I would say on a more optimistic note is that you are actually able, as a museum, as an artist, as I mean, we do what we can do to change consciousness. It doesn't come, uh, you know, like this at a, at a, at in, in one go. It comes slowly. Uh, and um, I think actually when we today, and you must admit, um, and the election yesterday is also testifying to that, even though it's also testifying to a lot of other dirty uh, uh, things, but at least there is a green movement that has, um, you might say it's too late, and you have given up already. You have given up already, but but uh, but something is actually happening. It's moving slowly in the right direction, and and uh, why so? 
probably because scientists and artists and institutions over the last 30, 20 or 30 years have been pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, you can't say that one single person or institution has changed everything, but you know, a little here and a little there actually changes. Suddenly, the, it, uh, it, it opens up, suddenly uh, the, uh, the decision makers uh, see something. Hopefully it's not too late. So, uh, so don't be too sure about what people take back home. That, that would be my uh, challenge to you. Or do you think you know? No, no, uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, I just question it uh, because anyway, I'm on the weak side. I am on the, on the, on the side. So I'm like uh, the flaneur. I, I look from a distance. So, mm. so of course I can only be arrogant because I'm, I, I don't have the state behind me. I don't have the position. I don't have the power. So I can only be as a mosquito in, the, in this game and come with some bites uh, mm. as small as I can to the elephant. So, but the, the idea of question, no, um, uh, it's, it's, my problem is not the cafe, it's, uh, it's the cafe is uh, extra things. It's, it's all these subjects that circulate uh, that the, the museum or let's say the contemporary take uh, with the uh, illusion of treat, treat, treating them. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, yeah, the, ex the example of the Danvo exhibition, for example. Uh, the, Danvo exhi uh, the recent Danvo exhibition uh, talk about the Vietnam uh, War. Uh, somehow, uh, so it was some very uh, inter historic uh, reference. But uh, that day, uh, what was his name? McCain died. The day when you had the big opening, uh, McCain died and was super involved in Vietnam. And his death became a kind of symbolic for some stunt, uh, PR stunt and marketing stunt in the media and the politicians. So, so I was asking, I was asking myself that day, precisely the Sunday, uh, I don't know, 29th of August uh, last year. Uh, how can the Museum of Contemporary Art, like State of Museum Focus, can refer of, of the new reading of the Vietnam War now? Uh, how Dan Vo is doing that, you know? So, so then I saw a kind of distance between what the museum uh, was expressing, which was uh, the Vietnam that my father knew, or that the Vietnam of that period, and the Vietnam now, and the American uh, vision of the Vietnam, the stunt of of the death of Cain, how Denmark is connected to that, uh, you know, how does the museum... So I found it a bit hypocrite to pretend uh, to, uh, to look at the Vietnam conflict or the Vietnam uh, situation uh, in 2019, uh, 18th uh, August, uh, with, without seeing what's happened now. So, 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 so you think you, you reflect about the Vietnam, but it's an old Vietnam. So by, by having an old stuff in mind, uh, you, you take the public the capacity to react on the, on the actual subject which are super different than the one you were exhibiting inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that way uh, I found the museum a bit dangerous because they uh, kind of uh, create this, uh, this illusion of taking care of the problems, uh, of the question. I remember an exhibition where I, I, I react also a lot. Uh, it was in 2000, it was when you, obviously, you, you were not there, it was a U-turn. Uh, the U-turn Triennal. Uh, you had an exhibition with uh, what is the name of this Lebanese artist? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, 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 the museum were exhibiting some some uh, uh, cars that have been explored in Lebanon. Twenty a collection from twenty years ago, mm -hmm. and this was not reflecting the conflict now. So so it's uh, it's always. And now you mentioned the election that is super positive. There is uh, there is more and more green. Um, what's happened with this super election where we can see it's positive, we should not be too late, it's, uh, it's optimist. It's a bit like when I saw, see an article uh, on the internet, you have this kind of thing circulating like Norway is the first country to forbid a uh, plastic straw for drinking Coca-Cola. Wow. Yeah. Luxembourg is the first country to give free transport. Okay, Luxembourg, they, uh, they, uh, they have uh, some things with their bank which is not so perfect. Uh, the Norwegians, they can forbid and make PR around the fact they forbid uh, plastic straw, but at the same time uh, they drill around and they sell all kind of weapons. So they can make PR of this. So, 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 so this kind of optimism about like some green and green, yeah, it's a small progress, but we should not jump off optimism with these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lot of PR, and the, and the contemporary art uh, use also this PR uh, stunt. Uh, to make, like uh, you see it also in Biennale, uh, uh, let's say I took the, this example of the refugee boat. Uh, uh, okay, we are caring about the refugee because we show a boat 
where they die. But it's the opposite. They, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't create uh, awareness, it creates cynicism, irony, distance. Uh, so, um, so sometimes I, it's not about state museum for culture or something, but it's, it's, it's about mm. the, the structure that seems to take some subject and then, and then screw them into something else. But can, yeah. can, I, can I step in here? Mm -hmm. I think in the, for instance, example of Yang Vo and uh, the show at SMK, is it right to criticize institution for the expression of the artist? Because it was the artist. It's the artist they select. They show the artist's exhibition they can and, show his, another and one. his choice of what he wants <laughs> to show and how he wants to show. And I don't think it, I don't think he wanted to deal with a problem of Vietnam or, or represent that issue. He was talking about himself and, and, and uh, yeah, I guess he, his position in the world and his reflection and his, his personal view on the events and the way things happened. Um, and, and, and then to, to kind of... That means that you can of course forever criticize and argue with each individual position of each artist and how they take things. I just point what is missing. Yeah, but you're there free to different. do that, but, but I think that it, it would be difficult to say that institutions should um, should then intrude and, and tell artists what they should. No, no, they don't. But they choose a category, uh, which, yeah. for example, in this case of the Vietnam, that uh, show some careness about uh, cultural identity, uh, being a, uh, once a refugee, uh, what's happened in Vietnam. Uh, so, so, so on the on the on the PR of the artists, you, you find all these things, you know. Um, that shows that the museum really care for uh, the future of refugees, the conflict and stuff. But this is one category. I, I never, I never criticize one category. I just say uh, you need you need to buy a diversity of category. And I just say if we want to speak about, I, I just had this thought about Vietnam that day because yeah. I was in mm. way. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, and I cannot shred any museum anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, let me just say that um, the, the Yang Ho exhibition, without uh, defending, in, in defending it in, in all its aspects, um, but the Yang Ho exhibition, exhibition surely wasn't meant uh, neither on the part of the museum nor on the part of, of Yang Ho himself, I think, as a way of solving any problem or even Dealing in that uh, pragmatic sense with the uh, with the with the uh, the problem or the aftermath or the uh, consequences of the Vietnam War, it was more like uh, a way of uh, of interrogating the 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 um, the way the personal biography and the larger global history uh, are and intertwined or entangled uh, and. Uh, and that, I think, is is the real point of the artistic project. Had he been had he uh, uh, he been interested in interested in what Vietnam, uh, which really has many consequences today as well, uh, also in the American self understanding and American foreign policy and so on, it still casts its shadows. Um, then he probably would have chosen. Other, other approaches, I think. So, so by criticizing it for not dealing with Vietnam today, is, in my opinion, a little bit beside the point. But of course, I, I was not criticizing. I was, I was lacking something. I said, oh, they talk about Vietnam, but you know, it's missing. I'm missing something. Yeah, yeah that's I'm missing. missing that's missing something. I'm not criticizing. Yeah, I'm that's missing. missing. I think, Thierry, that's missing something from from where you stand from and from what you talk about and what you engage with. Because you, you don't engage with aesthetics in the same way no. that Young Bo does. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, I asked you, I wanted to exhibit, I wanted to do something a la Danvo, you know, I wanted to exhibit the gun of, uh, you know, now you can buy the gun where Van Gogh commits suicide. Mm. To yeah, express yeah, about my artistic identity and my too late mm. and mood. I think you're unique, unique but I think in I'm your own way. Yeah. One thing, and, and, I, and we have been discussing this uh, way back. Um, uh, 
there are actually two things I would like to discuss with you in, in relation to this. Uh, one thing is about contemporaneity. What does it mean to you to be uh, contemporary? Uh, what is the, the contemporary today and uh, what does it imply as an artist? And the other thing I would like to discuss uh, is the... Uh, I, I refrain from calling it a fact because of course it's not a fact, but the, the, uh, the a dimension and aspect of, uh, of art production and art, uh, what would you call it, appreciation, perception, whatever, that has to do with delay. There is always, in my opinion, a kind of delay, and maybe that's also why you are so interested in the trop tard <laughs> dimension. It's, it's maybe always trop tard. But that, that um, dimension of coming too late, of course, it's too late is too bad, but too late is also, I think, or the delay, uh, the delayed response of art vis-a-vis -vis whatever world or uh, um, uh, event uh, is also the delay in which something is happening. Something at meaning uh, is uh, emerges. So, um, and, and 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 that's maybe my um, one of the things I think that one of the uh, the most attractive things about art, be it historical or contemporary, is that there is always this this little delay, this little anachronicity or anachronism that makes it contemporary, yes, but also a little bit non-contemporary always, even the most pretentiously contemporary art, if it's good, it's also not really aligned with, with the contemporary, and I think that's interesting. Is it fatality? <laughs> fatality? Yeah, it's, uh, it's embedded in the... Uh, it cannot be different. Uh, it's I always... Don't, I don't know, this, all this with a question mark. Uh, this capacity to be in time and, uh, and not be the delay uh, is uh, connected to the training. I, I compare with, uh, mm -hmm. with tennis. Yeah. A smash, you can play tennis 10 years and you can smash one day, you get the ball at the right moment. So the, the capacity to be at the right moment, uh, it's super possible. It's a question of uh, the, the problem. It's not possible because the, the institution don't want it. Or the artist has to be in the street, or so. So, so well, the problem actually, is the visibility. Actually, yeah, but what Michael is saying is that he actually finds it beautiful well, to have the delay. He doesn't think it's a mistake or it's a mm, problem. Sure, but he you can. He embraces the delay while you urge that. No, I have a whole wall called Trotta. This yeah. is all delay, and I cut them. Uh, so, uh, so, so your, no, no, your position no, no. is to urge yeah, the whole world to speed up. No, my, my position is, is to take time the whole rainbow. So let's say, I, I say that before I have this uh, uh, shower called in advance of the broken arm. So first mm -hmm. I'm interested, how can the artist be in advance the accident? Mm -hmm. You know, prevent the accident. The alarm, you pull it, you say, okay, there are going to be... Uh, uh, let's say, okay, I take an example with the Museum Focus. Uh, uh, six years ago, six years ago, no, no, but now we, we connect, interconnect stories. Uh, six years ago, uh, a bunch of Nazi uh, had a meeting in front of the museum uh, mm. with, uh, with the Perida uh, movement. Huh? Yeah, the Perida movement. Exactly. Yeah. They were meeting Fun in front of Stated Museum for Kunst. There were 50 people. I went there to make a film to try to understand where they were, mm. because they were also in front of the museum, so I want to see which kind of people are attracted to use the museum as a background for their protest or for their show-off. So I went to interview a few people. There were about 50 people, 50 Nazi. Uh, around them, I calculate double media. It was maybe 100 people filming them, you know? So I made a film about the fact that it was double uh, more people filming them than people participating. Now we are a few years later, what do we observe? So as an artist, I say, I pull the alarm. I, I, am, not, I am not inside Stetten Museum for Kunst, because this is for other artists. I'm outside. And then uh, what I observe, that the xenophobia will grow super fast in Denmark, because they encourage this kind of event to be a media event and film. So there is, I would say, tac tac danger. The more we film these people, the more they will grow. What do we see now? So maybe I was wrong, maybe my alarm was not right. What do we observe now in the last period? That, th that these people have super grow super fast and, 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 and they found a technique to attract medias and get out and get more. Uh, so let's say what I observe at that moment, 
Maybe I was in time, maybe I was in, in, in advance of what is happening now, maybe I was in advance, so I can mm -hmm. be sometimes in advance. Um, uh, for example, Nadia, when she was in emergency room in uh, Hanoi, she made, she made a work about uh, four years before he came out about Putin and uh, his homophobic uh, uh, laws. She did something four years ago. Another artist copies that and then Amnesty copies that, but then we are three years later. Four years later, it's, a, it's everywhere. She did it four years before. Maybe she was in advance because she said, look, in Russia, this is going to happen. Nobody listened. After we, have, uh, we did work in the bedroom about Camp of Flu. Uh, we say five years ago, we say, okay, now he has been voted that Denmark is going to use 25 million Camp of Flu. We express about that. We sound like stupid. Three years later, people say, oh, Camp of Flu. So sometimes the artist is a little noticing a few things. So uh, I'm interested to be in advance. Then I'm interested, if possible, to be in time, at least to be in time. If you have to pull the alarm, you stop the accident. And then when you are too late, I'm interested in the delay. And now, basically, I'm interested to observe that it's too late. So uh, I, I think I cover the whole rainbow. I'm not disinterested with delay. Now I say that we need different categories in the museum. Like you have, uh, you can have cappuccino, cafe latte. No, I don't have stop with this cafe. You have different categories of uh, art. You have one art uh, category uh, which is in delay, and another category which is in time. I take this example from uh, Mannheim. They have this uh, painting. Uh, it's the execution of uh, Emperor Maximilian from Edouard oh, yeah, Manet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took this uh, painting as an example to work with because. This uh, is called in the catalog, the word you find the, word, the most in the uh, um, museum catalog is the word, the artist is depicting. So here you have Edouard Manet is depicting the killing of the, the execution of the emperor. So we have found, uh, the museum have uh, uh, rise up the idea of the artist depicting. Which means depicting, if I translate, is that uh, the guy gets shot, everything is a catastrophe and the artist is <laughs> just it's just the pict. Uh, so I would say what kind of father are these artists if they just come and depict everything, uh, you know, all the dead bodies and all the people getting shot and so, okay, they are in delay, but, but can the artist uh, not depict, but, uh, but basically stop something, let's say the Nazi in Denmark, the climate change, something. You can also do an exhibition about climate change, how the nature looks after climate change, things like that. You can also think that uh, if we do this and that, maybe we could have stopped it and things. So, so, um, so to uh, embed the artist with the idea of, uh, of being uh, with a delay is, is, is one category. Mm. But how many floors you have in your museum? You have different, you have 50 rooms. So why don't you have a room? <laughs> Where? <laughs> 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 we, are, we are 400 artists in this project, you know, you have, uh, you have Nadia here, you have some other, you know. Why is that not a, a room where we can pulse now and, and show what we can? Um, you know? <laughs> Why not? Why is not possible? Because it's not a category which is contemporary enough? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, and twenty is a problem. It's, it's ultra contemporary. Yeah. <laughs> why, why don't you have a room where we pulse now? Um, it's, it's, it's an unanswerable question, uh, but I would say that uh, there are lots of nows uh, in a museum where we have lots of categories, lots of types of works, uh, so many types that I would say it even, and that's actually my challenge, I think, uh, a challenge in the, that, that we, uh, we, call it, we call it art for one of a better word, but it's actually many different things. All of them, in one way or another, dealing with with imagery and uh, representation, but but uh, but the approaches are so manifold that that um, that that the term art is just a kind of uh, a very vague umbrella for all that different. And uh, and I think uh, one category, at least in principle, is uh, is uh, the now, um, which would necessarily have to be a, a room that changed every hour. Uh, we have some works in the collection, uh, Gudipal's work that changes every second day. Uh, Gudipal comes and makes changes to his work so that it actually is in constant progress or in constant, it's not progress in a linear sense, but it's just changing and then he takes away, of course, because it's a museum and uh, all that, all what comes with that, we have made a contract with him so, so that uh, there are some, some things he can take away and other things he cannot take away. Um, and you might criticize that, we have a contract, but that's just the way it has to be. 
so, but, but he's making changes, uh, and uh, we have other works, for example, one that was acquired back in the mid 90s by uh, Eric Anderson, the Danish Fluxus artist, uh, that implies, among other things, a lot of uh, uh, wheel ch wheelchairs or chairs with wheels on them, uh, uh, designed back in the 50s. That are placed, you know, and they are moved around in the museum. So, so that's a kind of now, but most importantly, I think there is the now of those who are visiting. The, the, uh, the singularity of, of, uh, of, you know, associations, um, talks in front of works, uh, all that. I'm not saying this to, in any sense, criticize the position that you take. I'm just saying that there are many nows uh, uh, in a museum also like mine, which is both a contemporary art museum and a historical museum. But you don't have to uh, agree with my position, no, uh, no. you just have to represent it, because as a, as a, as a state-funded uh, institution, uh, you, you have to include any, you don't have to, you know, if I'm dressed in red, if, if you don't like red shoes, you don't have to uh, exclude me because I have red shoes, or because I'm French, or because I'm ultra contemporary or something. It's a, it's a, it's a museum. So it's not every day that you actually um, uh, are witnessing a meeting between an artist and a museum director, <laughs> negotiating a position. It's, it's, it's no, it's a museum. Yeah. It's a museum. So he's proposing no, an exhibition. No, 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 I'm not proposing because I will say <laughs> no. <laughs> You're too slow. <laughs> I will say, I will say, I will say, as a director, you don't have to like or disagree or agree. You have to represent different categories, like ethnic categories. You know, in the museum, you also must have some uh, artists that have not done the Danish Art Academy or not Danish. Or you know, we can also go in the in the statistic, you know, of how artists are represented by race. By you know, some people do it with oh, women, yes. but we can oh, do yes. we can do things like that. Mm. Uh, and also the category. So you you mentioned Rudy Pal. So let's say. I am going, to, what I call the now, it's not to change that every hour, is to say now it's something happening. Let's say we are the day after the election. It's not your problem because you're a Danish museum, but no, it's an Italian architect. But how, how do you express about the, 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 the growth of fascism in Italy today in the museum? It's, maybe it's not your problem, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it is your. So, how is it reflected? I mentioned again, if Denmark go in war in Iran tomorrow, how will you reflect about that? So this idea of pulsing the now is not only about uh, me and Masha visiting, having a conversation. It's also a bit, uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot, let's say, uh, have dorm and, and pitching artists that work to work that way to, to, to have the museum, because the museum is the house of all artists, also that category. Mm. Uh, but the problem I think you have, <laughs> sorry, I... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just a mosquito. Uh, the problem you have, um, well. the problem that you have, it's that uh, uh, if you have in the institution something which is uh, out of control, and Erland say the same uh, yesterday, say we cannot trust you or something. It's that um, if you have okay, if Goodipal has three objects that you have agreed already what they are, if he does that and that, you're safe. But if you don't know what is going to speak about this one, maybe he's going to speak. Uh, something you don't agree, or the government or the sponsor don't agree, um, then, um, then the unpredictability is your worst enemy, because as a director or as a curator, uh, you stop controlling the art. And uh, this is why you don't have uh, emergency art or ultra contemporary art, because then, <laughs> then it's out of control. <laughs> It might be so. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> yeah, control is of course uh, part of uh, of uh, running. At, at, how, it's well, also a state-run. Well, uh, yeah, it's a state-run yeah, institution, but it doesn't really change a lot. I think, um, of course, uh, there are. But but you know, it's it's a very dreary position uh, to take uh, to talk about control and the need of control. I, I, of course, there is a, there is a sense in which you, as a museum, uh, 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 needless to say, uh, need to have control of of things, uh, audience flow, uh, uh, building maintenance, security, all that. There is a lot in in a museum. There's just let's face it. There is a lot, a lot of control. Uh, but now, what you are saying is that that uh, we also are in a kind of unadmitted 
unadmitted need of control of the works. Uh, not only the works in the kind of conservational sense, but also works uh, the uh, the meaning so breathing uh, one. Yes. Yeah. And um, I um, maybe it is so. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but actually, I could imagine. Uh, I could imagine having works changing uh, within the uh, confines that just happen to be those of a of a museum where you have uh, people you have to control the crowd. They pay a ticket or they they come in for free if they are below 18 and so on. And uh, you have to control if they wear big baskets or uh, with uh, stuff in it and uh, are there weapons uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so. Uh, but I could actually imagine uh, uh, works uh, saying things that we uh, basically are unable to control in the sense that the uh, that the uh, the statements or the uh, or the meaning produced changes uh, all the time. Great, you have a free room now. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm just saying in principle. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I must admit, yes, it is a little bit uh, scary. Um, and why is that? Um, it's it's not it's not easy to say. It's not because I've got nothing. It's not that I've got anything against the way you work or other artists trying to be hyper contemporary uh, in the sense changing from hour to hour uh, before it's too late, uh, or even trying to be uh, to be ahead of uh, of um, events. Um, but um, but maybe I haven't yet seen the project that that does it in a way that convinces me. Um, so it's about you. No, 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 no. no. I actually, um, I'm, I'm actually uh, not that it's totally out of my control. But we are actually ten people deciding uh, together in unity what's going to be the next. So why no, no, these ten people be, never, never, never passed us personally. Why is these ten people never pass? For, for example, when we did it in uh, in, uh, in New York in PS1, they uh, they were happy about it and they were super happy about it because visitors they were paying many times to come back, mm. you know, because when you have a changing public exhibition, mm. then the public get addiction and come back and buy yeah. more tickets. So mm. so actually, uh, the, the fulfilling the viewers. Uh, the freedom of speech. Can I rephrase a little bit, and that's something that we've been discussing with Thierry uh, a lot, is that there seems to be a disbalance in how Thierry's work or, or the work of uh, like-minded artists like him is treated by the institutions in Denmark compared to the institutions around the world, because it seems that the appreciation and uh, interest in his practice is much more stable abroad, while in Denmark we continue to have the situation where now we hold two exhibitions with him, and for both exhibitions we, uh, yeah, we, we, we seem to have a lesser interest on the institutional side to the shows. Mm. So it's, it's just something, well, when he is invited to take part in the exhibitions in other places, there is clearly a success among among the audience in an interest in what he does and an interest among the media. So um, Which one? Yeah, it seems it seems that we we acknowledge some kind of uh, kind of unspoken agreement among the Danish institutions and I guess what he's trying to get to in in, in his way is if there is such or the blacklist? Yes. This is sheer paranoia. For being too, too sheer paranoia. Yeah. So uh, that what Mikkel says here is said. that is that in in their view they, uh, you know, they, they they observe what you do and and they haven't been convinced. But they don't have to be convinced. Uh, the idea. Uh, I'm not a salesman selling car. Where they have to like my car. They just have to represent what uh, what uh, is tendency. This this I need to be in the now and uh, now. I, I took that example um, uh, last time. Uh, Hans Ulrich Obrist, which is a pope in this uh, in this kingdom, is doing uh, an exhibition called It's Urgent. Eh? It's an exhibition called It's Urgent with Charlottenburg, with uh, Reclam Bureau called Urgency Agency, and something. So so mm -hmm. suddenly so suddenly these words are. 
going out the art world. So they, they use the same rhetoric, so we are in the now, the current affair, we have to look at this, you know. So, so all these things, the dictionary we published or you published, I, I found the sentence in the Biennale concept, this Biennale concept, this other Biennale concept, mm. they are there. So, so let's say this idea of, uh, of the urgent, the emergency, the now, the pulsing, the current affair, and something, and the, so the social thing is there. So, mm. so, 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 so the whole idea, whole idea of now. It is. Yeah. It, yes. it is in mm. the air. It's not. Mm. It's not. Yes. Uh, it's not the new avant-garde. It was maybe avant-garde ten years ago, where it was a bit strange. But now it's it's, it's mainstream. It's every Vienna level. Mm. You know. So, yeah. so, so suddenly. Uh, so then Hans Ulrich Uberist comes to Denmark <laughs> with a curated project called "It's Urgent," mm. and for us not to include. The Danish representative of this concept is a sin. Mm. Why not? Well, he comes in with I can't, a, with I a can't famous. Tell I'm, I'm not yeah. And I will yeah. say, I will say another thing. It's because I have been also when Tauber was working at Denmark Radio. I have also had meetings. Let's say now I explain the, the more views of the of the urgent uh, emergency platform. So basically, the emergency platform is to open a room in a museum where artists can come not every hour because it's too much. Every day they can come with an artwork which is about today's urgency. So let's say if Denmark starts a war, they can express about that war. If there is more Nazis, they speak about this. They can, so they take the, 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 the issue of today, for example, Nadia, she made a project where, where pedophile had a, a conference in the same town that day. So we take the things, the artists become nearly like a detective pulling alarm. And it's shown with artwork every day, and, and every day there is a debate, the public can join, the media can come. There is, it's uh, including the public. There is two, three hours debate around the art world, art, artworks. So, uh, so the artist can be challenged in this vision in a debate. The room is round. Uh, then, uh, then I wanted to connect that because it's all about visibility. If you have nobody in a room, it doesn't matter. So I try to connect that with a television program daily mm -hmm. reporting. So instead of editing the weather report. Uh, 10 minutes in the news, you will have two minutes of what the artist has perceiving today. So I wanted to connect the media with the emergency room and so on. And I visited Tauber about that three times. We did an answering together. I told with Aubrey a few times. The urgency agency told to me a few times. And the guys that make the festival also as well. And so that means they come with a project. It's urgent and all that. But what was urgent is to sell vodka. So that's what I said before. So. So, uh, so I get a bit. Um, let's say I ask myself some question about 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 what's going on in this uh, in this religion called the contemporary art and their uh, and their priest. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't tell you. It's it's probably. Uh, but if you if you uh, had if you if you had the project in this room in your museum, like we speak about it for now, 13 years. If if this has happened, uh, let's say 11 years ago, because then we will have two years to, to produce it. Uh, then we will not be in this situation, you know. So, so the thing is that I am not in a situation. You are in a situation. I am. I, I, no, I'm not. I'm not in a situation. I am in a non-situation. So let's say these things happen that suddenly uh, all these keywords, uh, the now, the urgency, uh, pump out in, in, into reclaim for vodka and stuff. You know, pump, 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 pump out in mm. different ways. Uh, and I don't understand why this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's a very interesting question. I actually try to warn my marketing people as well as my contemporary art curators to use or to overuse the word contemporary and now and urgency and all this because we're museum we are not very apt at being urgent or urgently present. Uh, but then on the same uh, at the same time, I must say that that uh, um, that we also have a drive towards. Uh, Reinventing uh, the, the the language of the museum, uh, which is difficult because it's such a kind of heavy institution. Uh, so, so of course we are we are all, I guess, uh, trying to come to grips with this contemporaneity. Uh, but um, but one thing I've uh, I, I try to avoid is over the the overuse of the contemporary because I think I, because I still think that that uh, museums you are rooted in the historical well aspect. yes we are rooted but not not in the sense that we are always looking back but but we have interesting roots going in many directions and and actually when we uh, invite artists to make things in the ex uh, um, 
we we always try to, to urge them to to take or to uh, to relate to the uh, collection because we are of course a museum of contemporary art but we are first and foremost a collection of things that have been done. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, many. Uh, yeah. yeah, but why do they do it in the man room in Germany? I have, I have to interrupt you and say that we are soon coming to an end of our Already? time of the conversation. No. This time we really had a, a discussion about SMK and Thierry Geoffroy <laughs> <laughs> and their lack of interaction in uh, in, uh, in the practical terms. But that's also interesting, uh, and I think. That led me to the idea to pose the final question before the two of you. To summarize in short, if you had one advice to give to Mikkel as the director of the institution that he is the director of, what would it be? No, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, it's blocked. So it's what I say. I don't know what to say because whatever I say will be entertainment will be whatever, what, what, you know, what is important for me at the end is uh, the, the result, the score, if we can do this or not do that, you know, obviously we cannot do it, you know, so I'm not going to say we something, do, we, can, we, can. we are not going to do, we are not going to have ultra contemporary in this, in this, in this museum or this other museum, it's blocked, I don't know if it's a blacklist or whatever, you know, it's just, I feel the thing are blocked, and, 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 uh, and I have nothing, you know, what I say is going to be entertainment, it doesn't, I have, what I have to say, I have said for 20 years. Mm. I don't have more to say, it's blocked. So I, I, you, you know what I have to say, I have books around. You know, so so you know, I have nothing else to say, I say it already. If, 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 if there is no, uh, if there is no, if there is no flexibility. It's still, uh, if there, that, yes. so. <laughs> no, if, if there is, if there is no, if there is no, uh, <laughs> if there is no, if it's blocked, it's blocked, I have nothing to, uh, to, else to add. Okay, so no more advices? No. Okay. And if there was one advice that you could give in short to Thierry? Don't give up. I think that we, we are happy to finish the second part of this enduring torture of Thierry to No, thank you, Michael, for coming and to continue. Uh, yeah, our ultimate message to from all of us to you, Thierry, is that we respect, admire, and look forward to more of your art. We don't think you should give up. We think that the I give up statement for you is just a, a way to pretend that you are, you know, how some animals use these tricks when they pretend that they're dead, and then when you come up to them, they, they attack. <laughs> um, so I continue to say that. I don't, I don't think that you're actually capable of giving up because you have so much uh, vibrant energy and so much to give to the people. Yes, we'll, we'll keep on working hard to make sure that you can continue doing what you're doing. And we thank everyone for yes, being part for of, um, of this uh, uh, bloody debate. <laughs> 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 and especially thank you, Mikkel, for for such engaging talk and also for being so diverse in, in your positions and not just taking the conversation from your point of view but being very wide. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>